Welcome to another AI video tutorial. Today, I will test a new model that was recently released called Flux Context. It allows you to generate images, edit them, replace items in the image, use your own image, and create a new scene while keeping consistent characters. You can even create a different art style. This model is released by Black Forest Labs, and many sites have already started to use their API to give you access to these models. For example, the OpenArt website uses it and you can also use it inside Comfy UI with the API. However, I will actually use the creator's website Playground. You can access this website at playground.bfl.ai. You just accept the agreement and continue with Google or email. After signing in, go to My Account and you should see 200 credits. I already used it this week, so I've spent a few credits. If you need more credits, you can go to the dashboard and log in there with the same email address. You'll see how many credits you have, and you can also add more. The minimum purchase is 1,000 credits, so I'll add a few more credits just to have enough for testing in this video. But you should try the free credits first to see if it's good enough for you before spending any money. 1,000 credits cost $10. I just paid those $10, so now I should have enough for testing. Let's start testing and see if it's any good. By default, you are on the Generate tab. Here, you can enter a prompt and generate an image. They release two models. You have the context version by default, which should be optimized and fast. And then you have the max version, which is supposed to offer the maximum quality for that model. There are also other models that don't support editing like Flux Pro and Deb. So let's leave those at default. By default, they set certain values, so before you hit the button to generate, make sure you've adjusted those settings. Choose the aspect ratio you need, landscape, square, or portrait. By default, it's landscape. I suggest starting with a batch of one and generating only one image. By default, it generates four, and it doesn't seem to remember your selection. If you refresh or change the model, it goes back to four. You can change the output to PNG or JPG, and by default, the seed is random, but you can add your own seed number. Let's add a prompt and give it a test. I'll test with a portrait of a woman, so I'll choose the portrait ratio. First, I'll test with the pro model. It usually takes a few seconds, under uh, half a minute. Let's also generate with the max model. Now look what happens. When I change the model, it also resets the settings to default and gives me a landscape image again, and the seed goes back to random. So keep in mind, Every time you change the model or refresh the page, you'll need to adjust the settings again. I'll set it back to portrait, add the seed, and generate with the max model. Let's delete the landscape image. So that is pro and that is max. The max seems to have slightly better quality, but the image size is the same and it costs you eight credits instead of four, which is the cost for the pro version. If we try a pro ultra version, this is not a context version, I just want to see what I get with the same settings. Uh, we get another image that is actually double the size and it's six credits. So if you just need to generate an image, it's better to, to use a non-context version for text to image. Use the context model when you need to edit an image. If you go to the edit tab, you can edit an image with text instructions. You just drag an image here and type a prompt for what you want to change. For the Fill tab, you can add or remove elements from an image, but it uses the Pro Fill model, not the Context model. There's also the Expand version, but again, it uses the Flux Expand Pro model, not Context. So if you want to use the Context model, stick to the Generate or Edit tab. Let's go to this icon and upload an image. I'll select this cute cartoon girl and then add the prompt. I'll mention what I want to change and how, for example, I want the girl to be walking on the street, coming from school, and also have a pink backpack. Don't forget to change the resolution and set how many images you want to generate. I'll leave it set to save as PNG with a random seed. I got an error because the image was too big and exceeded the maximum size. So let's delete this image and upload a smaller one. Same girl, just a full HD image instead of 4K. Let's test it. The result looks like this. In one image, it messed up the fingers, but in another, it actually looks pretty good. It followed the prompt and also kept the girl consistent. It loses a bit of quality, but it's still pretty similar. And let's try something else. I want this girl to have purple hair. And look at that, the hair is purple. 
There's just a subtle variation between the two images, so it's pretty good at replacing things like colors, objects, or text. Let's try something else, like this girl holding a piece of paper with text. It looks like this. Now let's try to change the text. I'll prompt that. I want to replace the text Pixaroma with AI to play. Let's see if it can do it. And look at that. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It does lose a bit of quality on the face, though. But with ChatGPT, it changes the face even more. Let's test with a portrait of a man, and I'll ask to add a black hat to him. It works great. The only issue is it loses a bit of quality in the eyes, but that could probably be fixed with a creative upscaler or a little bit of Photoshop. But let's do a quick test. If you saw episode 50 on my Pixaroma YouTube channel from the Comfy UI series, you probably saw the upscalers I use. So I uploaded the image of the man where you can see the eyes and face aren't very clear. Then I added a simple prompt to describe the image. I used a denoise value of 0.76 and got this result. This is how it looked before, and now as I drag to the right, you can see how it looks before, after. So even if Flux Context doesn't give perfect images on its own, there are always solutions. I have this anime girl illustration on the beach that's pretty detailed. I used Flux with a Laura and an upscaler to get this result. I added the image and tried to replace the girl with an anime pirate. In a few seconds, we got this image. It did change the girl to a pirate, but it also changed more of the illustration. I was hoping to keep everything else intact, so maybe it needs a better prompt. I tried a different prompt and asked for a pirate man with a beard. But when it generated, the background still changed a bit from one generation to another. Let's try the edit tab. Maybe we'll have better luck. I'll use the rectangle to select the area I want to edit and then mention a girl with a pirate hat. Let's see what we get. Yes, now it's much better. Choosing the area to change seems to work better, and it kept the background intact. On the Edit tab, let's upload the man photo again. Instead of making a selection, let's see what happens if I just use the prompt. Keep the same pose, but close the man's eyes. Again, I forgot to change the number of images. It's pretty annoying that it keeps resetting to four images and uses extra credits. So I got four similar images of the man with his eyes closed. I only want one. Let me set it to one by default, Black Forest Labs. Ah. So the images look okay, but because I didn't make any selection, it still changed the entire image slightly, not just the eyes. Let's see if we can make the man look like a clown. The result is this one. Not bad at all. I really like how it can adapt to what I want. If you want to do something different, it's a good idea to start a new chat using the start over button. Let's start with this portrait of a woman, and I want her to wear a red dress in France. Again, it was reset to four images. I keep forgetting to change the number. Some of them have slightly lower quality in the eyes and face, and maybe the max model can do better, but it costs double the credits. So I'll just use my local upscaler to fix it. By the way, if you have the image selected, you can use the show before and after option to compare them side by side. You also have the image info where you can see the seed aspect ratio, resolution, and model use. You can add it to favorites. And of course, you can download it or just right click on the image to get the download button. You can also share it. For this one, I did a quick selection over the eyes and prompted that the eyes are red, vampire-like. I got this image as the result. So making a selection is quite useful. From the edit tab, not the fill tab. Let's test it again, this time with the cartoon girl. Um, I click on plus, add the rectangle, and now I just select the neck area. For the prompt, I add an orange bow tie. I almost forgot to change the batch size again. I want just one. The result is pretty cool and useful. I really like it. If you want to continue editing, just click the edit button, but I'll go back and try something else. Let's take the girl that holds the piece of paper. I'll select the hand area and prompt that she's holding an orange perfume bottle. Let's see if it can do it. The first generation has too many fingers, but the next one is better. I can work with that. Another one also looks okay, and I like the bottle. You can right click and download the image. Let's go back and try the generate tab again. This time, I'll upload the anime girl illustration and I want to generate another illustration in that style. I'll add a prompt describing how I want the bunny in this anime style. I got the same mood and colors from the reference images, even the cloud colors. So 
It's pretty good at this. I wonder if I replace the anime illustration with a 3D cartoon illustration. Can it do it? I'll adjust the prompt for a cartoon. Um, okay, I didn't expect to get the actual girl here, but another generation gave me the actual bunny. So style transfer works pretty well and is useful. Let's see if we can replace the girl with a boy. I got one boy without glasses and one boy with glasses. The image isn't as clear as I'd like, but let me test it with an image to video generator like Kling AI to see how well it can turn the image into a video. I'll use image to video with the latest Kling AI model and upload the boy. Let me see what camera style I should use, maybe a handheld device, or maybe it's better if the camera follows the subject. For the prompt, I'll keep it simple, like the boy moves around and smiles at the camera. A five second video sounds good. Let's generate it. It takes about two minutes. The result is really good, so you can definitely use it to create nice videos from images you make with Flux Context. Let's go back to the Edit tab, and this time upload the photo of the man. I added a prompt to make him homeless, holding a sign that says Flux. I got the result, but for some reason, it also added the word homeless on the sign. The man's eyes are a bit messed up, but the second generation is a little better. I changed the prompt to make it clear that I only want flux as the text. Now the result is better, just like I asked. If they managed to improve the quality of the model, it would be great. Um, it has nice prompt understanding, uh, good editing, and decent consistency. Let's see if it can do a side view of the man. It's actually not bad at all. It can do side views, rotate the subject, and all kinds of angles. Let's go to the Generate tab again and just use a simple prompt without any image. Let's try a woman taking a selfie. The result looks okay, but the images have a bit of a vintage vibe. I think the model could be improved in this area. Let's change the prompt and make it more exotic. This is a little better. So the more exact your prompt is, the better results you get. Let me quickly test if we can make a believable video from this image. I'll use the camera following the subject's movement and add more details to the prompt. Let's generate it. And here's the result. What do you think? Does it look good enough? Let's try some art style transfer using this photo of the woman. Let's say I want to turn the image into a pencil drawing. It looks like it took the prompt literally and turned the whole image into a new drawing. I changed the prompt to make it clear I want the woman turned into a pencil drawing, and that worked. So it does a decent job of creating a drawing style from a photo, and it looks quite similar. Let's try an oil painting. This time the face isn't as accurate. The proportions are off, and the face is a bit shorter. I thought maybe it was my prompt, but... Even after changing it, the result is the same. So for me, the oil painting wasn't very accurate. Maybe the model isn't trained well enough for that style. Let's try a watercolor painting. The results are much better for this one, and I kind of like it, so it looks nice. Next, let's try a cartoon illustration. This one looks good too, since with cartoons, it just needs to be similar, not exact. Um, now, a 3D render cartoon style the result is okay, a little too realistic, but it still has that cartoon mood. Let's see if it can do a wooden sculpture. I got a request moderator message. I'm not sure what could be wrong. It's weird that it's so censored it can't do a sculpture. I know there's censorship, but nothing in the prompt should trigger it. Let's try a bronze sculpture. This one works. Very strange that it couldn't do the wood one. Uh, let's try an ice sculpture. That one also fails. Maybe it's a bug. I changed the prompt to a sculpture made from ice, and now it works. Does anyone know why it does that? Is it censorship or something else? Let me know in the comments. I tried to add more detail to the prompt, and again, it didn't like it. It's a mystery. Let's add a baby photo and see if I can replace the text on the baby's clothes with different text. It seems to work just fine. It even keeps the font. Pretty cool. Let me show you something interesting that I haven't seen anyone talk about. If we upload an image, like this photo of a man, and then want to add another photo of a woman to make a couple, there's no option to add a second person directly. So I thought, why not use Photoshop to create a landscape document, add the man on the left and the woman on the right, then save them together as a single image. Now I can import that image with both people and prompt what each person does. The man on the left is wearing a black suit. The woman on the right is the bride. 
and they're a couple looking at the camera and smiling. Let's see if it can do it. And look at this. It's not bad at all. The quality of the eyes isn't great, but the rest looks good. What if I want to take it further since it seems like it missed the bride's dress? Let's click on edit and adjust the image. I'll prompt them to look at each other, put them on the beach, and add the white bride dress again. Look at that, it works. This one is even better, with a nice bride dress. Let's go to edit and change it more. Let's make him look like a biker and her like a waitress. Now the more I edit, the worse the eyes get. But otherwise, it's pretty cool how much it can change the image. Hopefully they fix the eye quality in future updates. Until then, I'll try it locally in Comfy UI and use my upscaler to fix it. It fixed most things. The eyes still aren't perfect, but you can get away with it. I had to set a higher denoise to get more changes to the image. But if I go too high, the result is less similar to the original. That's all for today. If you found something useful, leave a like and a comment to help me make more videos. I want to thank everyone who subscribed to the membership and a special thank you to the AI Titans, the higher tier, for your continuous support. Have a great day and I'll see you on Discord.